Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Shadowrun Hong Kong. This is Canal RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today as we go back to the Mahjong Parlor and speak with Auntie Chang, and maybe she's gonna spank us or something. Something terrible is gonna happen or something. I don't know. I don't know what she wants. I really have no idea. I'm not. I don't know if she's mad or whatever. Let's go in there. Uh, there's still this guy, Doctor Shen Yang. I still haven't done your quest. Uh, okay, everyone is here. We got, uh, yeah, we got everyone in here, except Gobat. Where the hell is Gobat? Is that Gobat? It might be Gobat. I don't really recognize her. I don't run with her very often. So, hello, Auntie. How's it going? Is everything all right? As you walk through the Mahjong parlor, you see your crew waiting for you, clearly uncomfortable to be so close to the triad boss. Then you see why. Kylie Shang's cheeks are flushed and glowing. She's already hit the bottle pretty hard. Ah, Seal, you're here. Excellent. Yes, yeah, Seal, it is good to see you. Uh, they both have expressions that say they'd rather be anywhere else. Uh, well... Nice to see you all. Should he grab a table for some match? Shut up, Seal! I have important news! Really? Hmm. Kindly, Chang takes, his, takes out her PDA and gently places it on the table in front of her. The wiretap we placed on the police force has borne fruit. That's good news. Her mouth breaks into a wolfish green, her eyes take on a feral gleam. She appears fueled by alcohol and vengeance, a hungry beast on the hunt. My people have delivered a snippet of the recorded video call between the plastic-faced man and Chief Inspector Crate on the special duties unit. See? I knew I knew it! Whoa! This should be good. Should we take a seat? Unfortunately, it's only a snippet. There were some technical difficulties with the tap. The person responsible has been sacked. Sacked or killed? I don't know. Shang reaches out a lacquered fingernail, hunts for the button she's looking for, and stabs it in victory. There is a loud crackling noise at the beginning of the, rec of the recording, followed by a squelching squeal that Mike Scobbett cover her ears. When the video recording begins, the man's voice sounds far away, as if he's talking through a thick pane of glass. The woman's is louder, closer. Okay, so let's... Shift around and try to mimic that. So, th yeah. Say that again, there's something wrong with this line. Yeah. <laughs> I said... Oh, the woman's? There's no woman. Okay, is this a woman? No. Anyway, I said my client isn't interested in hearing more excuses, Inspector. That's what I thought you said. I'm not making excuses, mister. Yeah, that's, it's, this is the woman. Yeah, that's right. I have a department to run. Not for much longer. If those two Westerners aren't found, they're linked to this Raymond Black somehow, and my client wants them out of circulation immediately. The two runners are his accomplices, too. The little orc and the dwarf with the cyber deck. Gobet looks at Isabel wide-eyed and swallows hard. Isabel winks back reassuringly. I'm aware, Inspector, thank you. We don't know how much any of them know, and my client is adamant that the risk be mitigated immediately. I've already made this the SDU's highest priority, just to find once more, resor more resources on it. I'm going to need allocations from elsewhere in the department. That is a problem that can be easily dealt with. My client wants this over now. No more excuses, no more fuck-ups, no more cops floating in the river. Sh Kindly Shang smiles at that and pours herself a shot. Tell her we're rebuilding our efforts, says Chief Inspector Crate. Very good. Dead or alive, you bring them to me. My client requires my personal verifications that the, the threat has been eliminated. Hang on, this line isn't get, is getting worse. There's a sharp crackle and the recording ends. Kindly Shang picks up her PDA and puts it away with a smile. She unscrews the cap of her, on her bottle and pours herself a shot with, with a flourish. Man, she's drinking heavily. That's the guy we saw in the surveillance footage. The one who killed Raymond Black, was it? Yeah, but it's for the first time I've seen his face, I think. Oh, I don't know. Well, she leans in, in to the PDA, Gobat does. The plastic face looks a lot close, cooler close up. Yeah, that's why we didn't see that. Yeah, I think it's kind of pretty. That video doesn't tell us much. I mean, we already know that there's an APB on us. We all were, And all we're sure of now is that the man with the plastic face is definitely working for someone else. This Josephine. Josephine? Maybe. Uh, is that all we have, Auntie? The f a first name? It is not just It is not just a first name, Gobat dear. It is the, le the first name. Ooh. Yeah. Josephine 
Tsang. She's the only, she's the one pulling the strings. Henley downs her shot and slams the glass upside down on the table. That disease-riddled dog fucker, I should have known it was her from the beginning. And she had the nerve to call down the heat on my runners? On Nightjar? Oh, that scab scabrose fos fossil is going to pay. She she's an old lady, I take it. <laughs> um, so friend of yours? Cheng makes a wet whacking a mac hack a wet hacking noise in the back of her throat and spits on the floor. She's the sh the CEO of Tsang Medical Sen Services and a member of a member of the Hong Kong Executive Council. Josephine Duck fucking Tsang. CEO, huh? What do you know about her? She's she was Hong Kong philanthropi fi philanthropist of the year in 2054 and 2055. Children hospitals, homeless shelters, food distribution centers. Good causes and the kind that get good PR because people are too lazy and myopic to look for the real people doing their hard work. The face to face with the poor work. Don't be so cynical, Isabel. Coming face to face with the unsanitized for video poor is distasteful, dear. You know that. Beyond being a CEO and a philanthropist, I also know that Josephine Tsang is a lying, conniving bitch. Hmm. Philanthropist and bitch. Those two things sound mutually exclusive. Wake up, Sil. Power is power. Whether you're proving, providing children with three huts and a cut, or you're negotiating a treaty with a multinational, it's all the same. Well, it doesn't sound like you like it, like her very much. Whatever gave you that impression, my sweetie? <laughs> no, my darling. I don't like Josephine Tsang. And I'm going to fuck her up. I'm going to fuck her up bad. Okay, to elaborate on that, auntie? No. Not now. Not today. But you'll be there, my darling. I'll make it a party. So what is Tsang Medical Services? Josephine's baby. It was a B-rated corporation before she married into the Tsang family. But after she fought for and won the contract to rebuild Kowloon Walled City, their fortunes rose high. They began a rise of, to power that eventually landed Josephine on the west the, on the executive council. Really? So they rebuilt the Walled City? Well, figures. This is all connected with the dreams too, probably. So, yeah, there's a connection between Josephine Sang and the Walled City? Yes, the same place Raymond Black hired my runners to take him. I've already connected the dots. I don't know what it means, but it clearly means something. Yeah, so remind me who's this executive council again. My, may I, auntie? Isabel breaks in, giving Kindly Shang a chance to calm down a bit. <laughs> Hong Kong is run by a consortium of powerful corporations called the Board of Governors, who set up the executive council, an eight-member committee of em exemplary Hong Kong citizens to represent the people and run the city on their behalf. But, of course, you don't vote for them. That would be too unpredictable. Well, instead, he, every two years, two executive council slots come up for election and the corporations on the board of governors put up some possible candidates and vote among themselves in a closed-door session. So basically, yeah, this is basically what it's called a... Um, ah, I know the name, it's on the tip of my head, it's a... Uh, author seat, author seat, yeah, it's not a democracy, it is an author seat, author I, I don't really know how it's pronounced, but it's basically a group of people... Uh, elect among themselves who should rule everyone and uh, yeah it's the next closest thing to a democracy but it's not quite closed door I'm shocked of course every single one of these candidates is on some corporations payroll somehow wham bam instant government yeah that's that, well if we're cynical enough that it's not too different from what most democracies are really but anyway what uh, what do you think the connection is between Josephine Tsang and uh, this plastic faced man I don't know yet, but I will. Oh, he called her this client. Uh, that may be some sort of lead we can follow. Uh, right now, all we know is that he is her instrument. The one who killed Raymond Black. So, he... Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't... We're not sure he's dead, Raymond Black. Remember that. Raymond's not... Yeah, see, Duncan? Raymond's not dead. Yes, you may have mentioned that before, Gensho. Regardless, the plastic-faced man is still our best lead for figuring out what's going on. Okay, let's cut to the chase. What's our next step? There's nothing we can do to touch. 
Ju oh, there's nothing we can do to touch just a fine sang as much as I hate to admit it. But the plastic faced man is a different story. He's a third party operative who has been careless, and he'll live to regret it. <laughs> For a while. If Tsang thinks she can take <coughs> out two of my runners and get away with it, I'm going to have to explain things to her. We're going to find the plastic faced man, and we are going to hurt him. We'll hurt him until we know everything he does. And then we will use that to strike back Josephine Tsang. You will have your vengeance, and I will have my own satisfaction. Now, get out. I have to work. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Let's claim our rewards. Let's get ahead all of here. Everyone, <laughs> very hastily run out of this place because we have things to do. We have missions to complete before we do anything for right now. Yeah, let's claim payment for our run. Uh, our last run. And actually, I want to buy some weapons for our... for me. I want to buy some weapons for me. I need to rest as well. Let's do that. Uh, first, let's... Uh, yeah, the workstation is right where it was. Do I have new email on Shaggy and Josephine? Uh, hi, Seal. I think I can add a little context to that thing between Andy and Josephine Sang. You know, the thing that makes Andy hit the sauce and talk revenge. This is a combo of stuff I heard and stuff I put together myself. So your mileage may vary. This is from Gobat. Good. Uh, for years, the Yellow Lotus acted as tax collectors within the Walled City. Since the Walled City was built by Josephine Tsang, the Yellow Lotus was run by Auntie... And the Yellow Lotus was run by Auntie Chang, they must have had a working business relationship, for a while at least. From what Nightjar told me, he was her favorite, you know, you got that right. Auntie was, uh... Yeah, she mentioned him. Auntie was uh, known as a real up-and-comer back then. She was on the fast track to be the next Yellow Lotus 438. That's a big deal gig. Seal, uh, yeah, money and power galore. Now you know, now you need to know that there were a lot of triads and corps doing biz in the Walled City. All sort of stuff. Sometimes they worked together nicely and sometimes people got bloody. The way that I heard it, Auntie came up in some sort of grand plan to consolidate business in the Walled City. The power would be sleep, split between the Yellow Lotus and Sang's company and everyone else would get, cut, or would get cut out. If her plan worked, Auntie would rise in the Lotus like nobody else. Uh, and uh, Josephine Sangs would make long bank. Ah, there was a catch though. In order to, for the plan to work, both women would need to jump through a lot of hoops. There'd be street level maneuvering and power plays and on his side and uh, blackmail and negotiations on the corporate level from Josephine Sang. So I get it that Josephine betrayed her? My info gets sketchy here. From what I've pieced together, Tsang went behind Auntie's back, yeah, and took her plan to her boss, a 438 named Wong Lun Fat. They cut kindly out of her own plan. Oh boy. Why did Tsang do that? My guess is that she saw Auntie as some sort of threat. People in the know say that Wong Lo Wan Lun Fat is weak and greedy. She can be manipulated if her palm remains well greased. So, there's a lot of women involved in this stuff. Wong Lun Fat is a, women, a woman's name, apparently. Long story short, power was consolidated in the walled city, just like Auntie planned. Only she didn't wind up getting any of it. Her climb up the lotus ladder came, up, came to an abrupt halt. She's still a straw sandal, just like she was before Tsang backstabbed her, and now she's stuck in Hehoi like a fly in an amber. I'd be pissed too if you were me. Yeah, well, get a bit of an insight on that. Let's access the Shadowlands, let's post da pay data for sale. Yeah, we have that, and let's claim payment for sold data. Yeah, that's good. 792 yen, that's nice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so, this is not what I need, I think. This over here. Claim payment, yeah, there it goes. So... Did that go well? Your payment is attached. I confess that I am very pleased with your work. It's not every runner who could have pulled off a job with this magnitude. Well done. Yep. We got that. We got that. So, we got no runs, no new runs. Let's rest and let's embark on a new quest. We are going to go and uh, do that quest for Dr. something or other. Sleep. Another dream, maybe? A stabbing pain in your stomach jolts you awake. Your entire abdomen is cramping up. You roll in your cot. Willing to sh will willing the shooting pains that radiate from your stomach to go away. That's a cramp, right? It's just a cramp. I don't know. Your mouth is bone dry and your tongue is swollen. It feels thick and inarticulate. 
like a useless slab of meat. A quick glance at your PDA tells you that it's 4 a.m. Outside of the cabin, the rest of Hioi sleeps. All that you remember of the dream that you that that you awoke from from is a horrible, unfulfilled yearning and a need to get where you were going first. Others were behind you. You could feel the heat on, of their breath on your neck. If you were to beat them to your destination, you could slam the door in their faces, keep them out and away from what was yours. But if they overtook you, you would feel that terrible longing forever. As you grasp at that last fleeting memory of the dream, a wave of exhaustion washes over you. It feels like you've been drugged. Oh boy, really? I don't think so. I didn't need anything that I didn't know. I didn't need anything. Okay, you collapse back into your cot and into a black, dreamless sleep. When you open your eyes again, the sun filters in under your door. It's morning. The sun filters in? Where from? I don't see any sun. Anyway, that was a weird dream, but somehow reminiscent of what we have heard and dreamt before. Hmm. Interesting. Quite interesting. Now, for the next task. I think I'm gonna take Gobat, because she's a better summoner than I am. Actually, she's a proper summoner. I'm just a smart, a smart talk. Yeah, a smart guy. Like a wise guy, I guess. Um, I don't know. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Let's see. So, enter the MTR station. We're gonna go board the train. And travel to the Repulse Bay Hotel to dig up information on Nival Meh. So, I am gonna take. Nobody cares to come with me. Okay, so we got Eos, we got a lot of other mercenaries. I kinda wanted to buy a pistol for me, but I forgot about that. Ah, whatever. Let's take Isabel, because I need her decking. Um. Rector for his rigging. And I'm not gonna take Duncan. Maybe I am. This might be a main mission. Yeah, let's go with this. Uh, Gaichu, would he be good? I don't know. Uh, well, yeah. Nah, nah. For interesting things. For, for interesting sake. Interestness? Interest sake? I don't know. Just make it interesting. That's what I'm trying to say. Let's take Gobat and uh, leave... Um, yeah, let's let's take the old team. Let's go. Yep, let's go. Let me drink a little bit of water. <sighs> much better, much much better. You arrive at the eponymously named Repulse Bay, a gleaming hotel and apartment building on the shores of Repulse Bay, Hong Kong Island. Rolling storm clouds choke the sky, leaving the structure of sinister, uh, uh, lending the structure a sinister appearance. As you push through the door and into the building, a sudden break in the clouds reveals a sun that's gone red as blood. Hmm. You make your way into a ground floor elevator. The attendant pays you no mind. As the car begins to qu climb, you hear the sounds of merriment drawing closer. As the door slides open, you find a Ville Mass party in full swing. Yeah, that's right. That's the party. It's party time, everyone! Everyone, everyone, yeah. Let's, get, let's give everyone some proper armor if they need it. Nah, they have good armor right now. I'm the only one carrying around this crappy, this crappy ballistic cloth suit. Um, Emperor's sword, this... I ain't gonna get it for myself. <clears throat> I don't think I can use it. No, it requires close combat, that's right. So, does Duncan use that? I don't think he does. Uh, go back maybe? Nah. Yep, yeah, it's all good. I got this spell though. What does it require though? Spell casting five. So go back, can you have that? Oh, you have that already? No, that's aim. This is wild aim. Let's get. Oh, you don't have. What? You don't have spell casting five? Okay. Well, that's that then, I guess. Let's confirm. Let's get into here. I really need to stock up on, on items. I really need to, uh, but I don't want to bore you to tears. I'm gonna do it, do it in between episodes next time, next chance I get. So, I know I have karma to spend. Um, so quickness is good. This is gonna give me pistol double tap. Hmm. Charisma is nice. I kind of want spirit summoning. Do I have this? I. Yeah. Okay. I didn't want to buy that. Yeah, good. So I have this. 
Um, this is gonna give me new etiquette, but I think for right now we're good. Let's go with uh, quickness and increase our ranged combat and pistol. And uh, that is gonna be that. The elevator disgorges you. Disgorges me? Man, the, the vocabulary in this game sometimes. Yeah, disgorges me. That's fine, it's fine. I, I, I'm not complaining. The elevator disgorges you onto the mezzanine with little fanfare. Off in the distance, you can hear the sounds of clinking glasses, carefree laughter, and the silverware on China. I'm kind of my element here, Seal. I'm not much of a party person. How do you want to handle this? Check the apartment first. I brought you for a reason, Duncan. I brought you for a reason. My vote is party. Can we go to the party? <laughs> See? I told you this was gonna be interesting. Gobat Goba is a fun girl. She is a fun girl. I mean, she's an orc. How how not fun can a An orc is always gonna be fun. She's always gonna be fun. I like her. Um, well... I don't know. Uh, well, we'll play it by ear. I don't know this scene any better than you do. She lets lose a wistful sigh. Uh, alright, if you insist. Go on, lead away. Oh, come on, that made me sad. I want I want to please her. I want I don't want her to be sad. Okay, this is our main objective. Where what is that objective? I don't see it. We got an optional right here, so let's go with an optional right now. Shall we mingle? I think we should mingle. What is that? Wet floor? Day special? Butter's delight. Hello. A sudden looking troll stands on the periphery of the kitchen. He turns to you, shoulders slumped forward and sighs. No resser in service tonight. The kitchen stall's too busy with a party to serve anyone. Wish I could get onto that balcony. All oh, that delicious food. See, this guy knows what's up. I know, Gobbit, I know, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, looks fancy. Who's throwing this shindig? A, three, a treat producer, I think. Saw some actors out there earlier. Some ones who act in Promises in Moonlight. Uh, have you seen the show? Of course! I can't wait to see the new season. Oh, me too! That twist with Lady Xiong in that last episode? What a cliffhanger! I couldn't believe it! Spoilers, man. Spoilers. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Good luck with the kitchen, buddy. Oh boy, we made friends, we made friends. Let's check this thing out before we make more friends. Okay, so we got a hijack point right here. I good thing I brought Isabel. Uh let's let's speak with somebody else though. That party looks like it's really fancy. Who's throwing it? I don't know, but I could swear I saw Penelope Wong in there. Oh man, I'd love to meet her. She's so glamorous. Glamorous? That's what you call her? Yeah, right. It's all about the personality. Hm. Oh, uh, so you got a waiter over here. The ragged waiter manages to straighten up as you approach. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the veranda at the Repulsive Bay. How may I be a service? So, what's this? What's with the guard by the balcony? Oh, there's a private party outside, and our establishment provides security for any ever event that requires it. But don't worry, the balcony will be free again in a few hours. Okay, so I've got some questions about the vile Ma. Heard of him? Certainly. Everyone knows Mr. Ma. Yeah? What kind of guy is he? Between you and me, he is difficult. Which is pulling it, putting it lightly. Ma runs the staff ragged. Ah, oh, that's his party out there. Riches like him love to display their wealth. Sounds like you have some stories. Ah, oh, like you wouldn't believe. He once made a handful of us walk all the way out to Shelk O to fetch dumplings for his guests. It was pouring out with winds blowing around 50 kilometers per hour. Practically, practically a death march in that weather. Uh, why didn't the kitchen ha here make Ma more dumplings? Ma said the kitchen's dumplings weren't good enough. Called them peasant food in front of all his guests. Chef Kang was furious, of course. But since Ma's reach, hotel management told us to give him whatever he wanted. By the time we got back for Shank from Shack O, the dumplings were cold, the party was over, and Ma had retired to his suite with a pair of starlets. And we, ha and we had to pay for those dumplings out of our own damn pockets. 
couple days later, Kevin came down with pneumonia from his trip. Lost his job over it. Really? Man, that's brutal. And that's just one of our experiences with him. Yeah, needless to say, no one here is a fan of the man. But we are paid to serve the tenants here. So that's what we do, I guess. It's a living. You look exhausted, man. Why don't you take a break? I guess. Not yet. I can't afford to miss any tips. I went to Mokau last week. It wiped me out. Bad luck with horses, you know. Really? Hmm. So you like gambling? Um... Well, maybe I can help you out. A favor for a favor? I'm listening? Well, I need access to the penthouse apartment. Name your price. I've got Nuyen to spare. Alright. Whose apartment? Nephile Mass. 500 Nuyen and the code is yours. 250 and I'm walking. Or I'm walking. Better something than nothing, right? Okay, code is 1635. <laughs> oh, and if you get caught, I didn't tell you anything. Of course not. Never spoken to you in my life. <laughs> Have fun with mass things. If some, were, if some were to go missing, maybe wind up at a pawn shop. I doubt they'd be missed. Really? Okay. Well, if he doesn't want his things, I guess I'm gonna help myself to them. So we got a security guard. A security guard stands in front of the patio. A bored expression on his face. He looks up at you and down as you approach. He looks you up and down as you approach. Private party, pal. Invitation only. So are you kidding me? I was just in there talking to Kevin Chu. Don't tell me you've already forgotten my face. The security guard pauses. He leans forward and scans your face. His expression uncertain. After a moment, he steps back. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you. Talking to Kevin Chu. Terribly sorry, sir. What happened again? Okay, so we got X's and we gain karma. Perfect. I don't want to go there right now. But Gobbit wants to. <laughs> Gobbit is like, come on, come on. Let's go. Let's go. I want to go there. No, hold your tits, lady. Hold your orc tits. Oh, boy. Let's first hijack this thing. Because I want to find... No, actually. Hmm. Yeah. Let's hijack this thing before we go in there. Uh, let's see. Matrix data line. Hey, Isabel. Jack in this thing. Uh, so she has everything she needs. Let's go in there. And into the matrix we go. Okay, 30 system trace. That is not very hard. Actually, it could be very hard, but uh, we'll see how it goes. It means that I will not be able to get detected and uh, leave to tell the tale. So let's see. Let's study this thing. We got a watcher I see doing this patrol. We got this water watcher I see going back and forth. Um, so I guess that is a good place for me to go to. Oh boy. No, 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 no. Damn it. I almost screwed up right there. Yep. Almost screwed up. Okay, so this guy. Uh. -hoo. Come on. We got through. We got through. I think. Go. Oh, there we go. Good. Whew. Okay. Locker IC rating 7. That is not too bad. Let's get ready. Hmm. Okay, we're good, we're good. Let's start. Two, five, five. Two, five, five, four. Oh, this is one is harder. Five, six, nine, six. One, one, two, five, two. One, one, two, five, two. Yeah, this one is harder for sure. One, eight, nine, three, nine. One, eight, nine, three, nine. Three, two, five. Eight two three three two five eight two three. It might not be harder though. I might be forgetting. Five five four nine nine three four. Five five four nine nine. No, that was nine. Okay, next. So woohoo! We saw a lot of stuff right there. I think it's this one. I think it might be this one. Come on, give me something. Uh, yeah, it is. This, it is this one. Okay, good, 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 good. Perfect. Whew. So we got hotel. Data core, what is this? Welcome to Repulse Bay Central Data Hub. Please state query. Query? Query? I don't know. Search for information on Vile Ma. Expand query. Uh, okay. Search other records. Select subject. Events. What event found? Yellow, subs Yellow Springs Films Private Party. Mezzanine level. Front desk indicates six unclaimed invitations. Oh, so this is a way to get into there. Huh. That's pretty cool. Um... So this doesn't do anything for me. So how about Planned Hotel Expansion? 
you download a series of detailing expansion plans, uh, a series of files detailing expansion plans to the hotel's ground floor. These might be available to local construction firms. So that's something for me to sell, I guess. Uh, maintenance logs, let's see. Reams of data floods flood the screen. Everything's organized by way of reference numbers. It's an incredibly obtuse and confusing system. Without knowing what number to search for, there's little value to see here. Okay, let's disconnect. Let's get out of here. Oh boy, this is gonna be a little bit problematic, isn't it? We got that guy coming this way. Okay, I might be... In with the shot. We're in with the shot right now. There we go. Good. We're out. We're out. Whew. This isn't hot. This isn't easy. This isn't easy. Nope. And with that, I'm going to cut the episode right here. I am Colonel RPG, and this has been Shadowrun Hong Kong. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video. But above all, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this series. And I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.